just hanging out for a second, wait until I see everybody has their note packets ready before we start, because we're we're still using this to graph two variable inequalities as our objective, but you could really break that down into two objectives, which was what we did on Friday, graphing these linear inequalities. That was Friday stuff. Um, this is the one where you have to kind of hit your pause button because we're really good at graphing lines. I mean, we want to put it in there solid right away, but we have to pause ourselves and say, wait a second, dashed or solid? And we know that the dashed ones come from not having an equals bar and that the solid ones come from having an equals bar. The other thing that people sometimes make a mistake on with this test is not doing the shading, you know? It's like they've got the line on there, they did the dash, they did the solid, and then they forget, oh, I have to test a point, which I think is going to be kind of good this time because we're talking about it today and we're going to test on Wednesday. So I think the chances that, you know, you're going to mess that up are pretty doggone low if you're taking notes today and you're doing your assignments. So we should be able to take care of all that. So there were the linear inequalities, kind of like part A. Part B today is absolute value inequalities. And we ended with a word problem piece on Friday. So we are right here. I think it even says day two up at the top of your page in a little teeny writing up there. Yeah. So I started thinking about how this must be really super close to graphing linear inequalities or they wouldn't have put it in the same section. So um, instead of graphing a line, I'm going to have to graph a V. Then I have to hit my pause button. Should it be dashed? Should it be solid? Well, I'll look for the equals bar. That'll tell me that. And then again, I have to figure out where to shade. Well, I had mentioned to you before, I don't like shortcuts because testing a point always works, no matter what. So we're going to graph two variable absolute value inequalities. We're going to solve for y because what we really want, I'm going to remind you what those look like. What we really want to think of is y equals a, absolute value of x minus h plus k. So if we have it in that format, these were super easy to graph. Because all we had to do was figure out where's the vertex, and then we used a as the slope of the right side. So it should be a quick graph if it looks like that. If it doesn't, we try to make it look that way. We try to figure out how could I get it to look like y equals a, absolute value of x minus h plus k. So like it says, graph using those transformations. Find hk. That's your vertex. Use a as the slope of the right side. Then stop. Hit the pause. The boundary line is not a line anymore. It's a v. And we need to know whether or not it's dashed or solid. And then we will test a point to figure out where do we shade. So what we have to do today is try to find a way to make these look like y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k so that they become really quick and easy graphs. And on the very first one, look what they did. That's not right. 1 minus y is less than the absolute value of x plus 2. Well, it's supposed to be just a y over there. So the first thing we want to do is subtract 1 from both sides. Now, I can't subtract 1 from the 2 because the 2 is inside the absolute value bar. So they're not the same thing. But I do know I can tack it in the back, and that's OK because that's a k value in our y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. Problem. There's a negative in front of that y. That can't be there either. So that means I have to divide the whole thing or multiply the whole thing by negative 1. Either way. This has a less than. What happens to that less than if we multiply or divide by a negative? Goes the other way, flips it and becomes a greater than. Good, I saw people making the motion with their hands there. So y is greater than, it will be negative absolute value of x plus 2 plus 1. Everything over on the left-hand side. Let me extend my line there. Everything has to be divided by that negative 1. All right, now we're rolling. 
So I go ahead and put my y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k either right above it or below it so that it's really hard for me to forget that x's are always opposite of what we think they should be. So I want my vertex. And I know it's hk. So what would it be? Negative 2, 1. X's are always opposite. So that's where I start. I go to my vertex at negative 2, left 2, and up 1. Now I'm looking around for the slope of the right side of the graph. Well, what's the only thing up there we haven't used yet that could be considered a number? The negative in the front. That's our little imaginary negative 1. So the slope of the right side is negative 1. Oh, so this one's going to go down. From my vertex, I go down 1 and right 1. And it should go down because there was a negative. And then I remember for the left side, all I have to do is use the slope backwards. So down one and left one. And then I hit my pause button, wherever it may be, because I need to know if this is dashed or solid. It is dashed. It does not have an equals bar. Flipping it doesn't make an equals bar magically appear, so it's dashed. Now, this is different than our line, because with our line, you know, we had the line separating the two areas, the two regions that could be shaded. With absolute value, you're either shading inside the V or you're shading outside the V. Is 0, 0 on our V? Well, then that's always a good point to test. And here's another good idea. Now, we're pretty sure we did the algebra right and that this is the correct graph over here. But if we did something wrong and we check with what we did wrong, then our checking, our testing is going to be wrong too. So it's always a good idea to go back to the original and put your zero in. So 1 minus 0, that's 1. And 0 plus 2 is 2. And the absolute value of 2 is 2. Is 1 less than 2? It is. So that means I have to shade where 0, 0 is, which means I'm shading outside the V. And again, I can't turn it sideways and do the nice shading you can do with pencils and stuff like that. but. Definitely people could make out that's where I wanted the shading. Now, if it's a test, because remember, we're only three sections on Wednesday's test, 2, 6, 2, 7, and 2, 8. I'm probably going to put like 0, negative 5 in there also and make sure it doesn't work. So I go back to the original, and it would say, Oh, what do I have here for my y? Negative 5. 1 minus a negative 5 is 6, is less than. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3, but the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Is 6 less than 3? So I did it right. Yeah, and that's always a good check, especially since I think it'll be one sheet of paper, front and back maybe only one and a half pages. You know, it, it just is not going to be a huge test for three sections. So make sure that you're doing them right. Let's try this one. More you than me this time. What is the graph of, uh-oh, is that ready to go? What's wrong with it? It has a minus four. What should we do? Add four, exactly. Let's add it onto the other side. We're actually adding it to both sides, but we have to multiply or divide by a negative 1 this time. 
No, no negative in front. Oh, cool. That's like a shortcut then. So now I'm going to put my y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k up there and ask you to tell me where's my starter point, my vertex. Good. Positive 1. What? 4. Number in the back. 1, 4. So there's my vertex. 1 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 up. Now I need to know, how should I use the slope of the right side? What is it, first of all? 2? I'm going to make it 2 over 1. So from that spot, where should I go? Down 2 and over 1? Up 2 and over 1. I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then use the slope backwards for the left. So up 2 and left 1. Hit your pause button. Dashed or solid. Oh! Good catch, because I forgot to write it down up there. Got it in the purple. There it is. It's solid. Zero, zero, a good test point? Yeah, it's not on the V. Remember, we're, we don't want to test things that are on the lines, on the Vs. Zero, zero is not in there at all. So, test, zero, zero. Zero minus four is greater than or equal to two times the absolute value of zero minus one. Well, we have a little more math to do this time. What's zero minus four? Negative four. How about zero minus one? Negative one. What's the absolute value of negative one? One. What's one times two? Two. Is negative 4 greater than or equal to 2? Oh, well, that means 0, 0 doesn't work this time. And that was outside the V. So I have to do my shading inside the V. Like so. So far, so good? A lot of review, right? Yeah, a lot of things we've already done. So now, something else we already did. We already did some writing on Friday. But those were lines. This is absolute value. Oh, that's got to be so much tougher. No, it doesn't. Because we know this form requires us to know where's the vertex, what's the slope of the right side. And then we can figure out what we could use for less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, greater than, or equal to, from that. All right, you ready? First thing I want you to find are the coordinates of the vertex. That'll be step one. What are those coordinates? Yep, 3, negative 2. Then we need the slope of the right side. So remember, what you always want to do is find two nice grid points and then use those. Well, this looks like we could go from right there to right there. So what would the slope be? 1, yeah, up 1, over 1. So, so far we've got this, y, and then we have one absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2, because again, the x is, is always the opposite. Then I just have to figure out, should I use less than? Should I use greater than? How am I supposed to know? Well, you could always test a point and figure out what's going on. Our shading is inside. And that means that the number 2, 0 should work, right? Um, let's put 
should work. So what we're going to do is put it in for x and y and put in what would make it work. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, what would make it work? So if this is 0 and this is 2, what's 2 minus 3? Negative 1. What's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. So what's 1 times 1? 1. Minus 2? Negative 1. Now remember, we want this to work. 2, 0 was in the shaded region. So what could we put in between here that would make that a true statement? Greater than. Now do we want an equals bar? No, greater than will work. If they're solved for y, here comes that shortcut thing again, and you shade up, that's greater than. Shade down, it's less than, you know? So if it's solved for y, that's the shortcut piece. But you can always test a point and make sure it's going to work. So now, the one thing I'd want to do is just tidy this up a little bit, although I'd probably give you credit for leaving that one there. And that's because we know that if they wrote it, to simplify it, that 1 would not be there. So it would be y is greater than the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 2. Well, that wasn't too bad. All right. So you can lead me on this one. How should we start? Vertex. Be careful with this one. What's the vertex? Negative 4. See how they went by 2s? They're going to do that to mess with us a little bit. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. So negative 4, what? 3. Yeah, they had to make it a little harder. It was too easy, right? They had to make it harder. Now let's see. Nice grid points, huh? Well, we could. Use those two. It's a little awkward, but we could. What do you suppose the slope is? Down how many and over how many? Down 2 and over 2. So it's going to be negative 1. A little harder to find since they went by 2s there. And we didn't get any nice grid points. But there it is. All right, so I've got a y, and that's it till the other side. So what should go in front of the absolute value bars? Negative. Don't want to bother with the negative 1 this time? Save yourself a step? Okay. How about inside the absolute value bars? x plus 4, good catch. In the back, plus 3. Is the shading up or is the shading down? Up. So what should we use? Greater than. Should we put an equals bar under there? Stashed. Yeah. There it is. So, like it says, if, and we talked about this shortcut before, if it's solved for y, and we're going to make it solve for y when we write them because we want y equals ax minus h plus k. You can tell from looking at the inequality y greater than shade above the boundary line. Can you use the same technique to show the solution of an inequality like 
2x minus y is greater than 1? And the answer is no. And that's why, like I said, in the past I wanted to scrap that. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of the only one that says, let's not teach them the shortcut. So um, this is in standard form. It's not in slope-intercept form. It's not the same. It doesn't work the same. So the answer is no. You have to have y by itself in order to use the shortcut. And on a test, don't use a shortcut, especially when it only covers three sections. It's going to be itty bitty, a little tiny thing. So, you know, test your points and do it that way and be absolutely certain. Okay, now we have finished that objective. You can grab the old yellow sheet here. And where are my glasses? They're there. Got so much stuff around my neck and my face, it's hard to find them. I can solve two variable inequalities. That's us. We just rocked it out in two days. We did the lines on Friday, and we just did the absolute values today. So you've got those. Well, I think this will be another one where you will want that little negative 10 to 10 graph paper. Where did my little bar go so I can move this up? There it is. Sorry, I'm going to walk in front of it for a second so I can get over here and double check. But I'm pretty sure, well, I know we're doing some graphing. It's just a matter of do you want the negative 10 to 10 paper. Yep. Yeah. So the first little wire basket up there would be the fastest graph paper for you today if you want to use graph paper.